While this just may be a big win for the ufology movement, this as a scientist has just come out and stated unequivocally that he has proven that an alien UFO landed on Earth. Hey, what's up guys? Tyler here with Secure Team. Well, we have a breaking story here and it's connected to one of the not only most well-known but also undebunkable UFO cases in modern history. And that case occurred back in 1971. It's called the Delphos, Kansas UFO Ring. And if you guys haven't heard of this, it truly is an amazing case. And it's one of the few cases where an alien craft actually left physical trace evidence behind. So we're not just talking about some story here, something that can't be confirmed by any actual evidence. There was physical evidence. And what happened was, there was a 16-year-old boy by the name of Ron Johnson who was outside of his house with his dog tending to the family sheep when he suddenly witnessed a mushroom or saucer-shaped craft descending out of the sky. The object was described as being metallic and having multicolored lights wrapping around it. It hovered around 75 feet away among some trees and was estimated to be maybe a few feet off the ground hovering. He estimated the size of the craft to be about 8 feet in diameter. And so obviously stunned by what he was seeing, he of course tried to get a closer look. But I guess this craft and the lights around it were so bright that he couldn't really make out any details. But what he did say was that the craft was making a loud sound that was similar to what he described as quote, like an old washing machine that vibrates. So the object hovered there for a few minutes, and as he tried to get closer to it, it started raising up off the ground, and as it did this, the bottom of the craft began glowing brighter and brighter. The 16-year-old boy, Ron Johnson, later stated that he was temporarily blinded by the brightness of the craft. So as it flew away, he finally got his vision back. He, he, he started to be able to see again. And so he bolted back into his house, grabbed his mom and dad, who came back out with him and also witnessed the craft in the sky, which at this point, it was getting pretty high up. But what was more shocking was when they looked at the ground where this thing had been hovering, they noticed that the craft left a huge glowing ring on the ground that was still glowing. So the craft had literally left some sort of luminescent residue, as well as on some of the trees nearby. The family members stated that the glow felt strange to them and that the material on the ground reminded them of a sort of a, like a slick crust as if the soil had been crystallized. It's also said that the boy's mother's fingers also went numb as if they had been given some sort of local anesthetic. So they settled down for the night and as soon as dawn broke, they came back out with their Polaroid camera. And it was at this point that the mother aimed the camera at the ground where this glowing ring still sat. And with one picture left in the camera, she snapped this photo that you're seeing here. Now, here's some things to note about this mysterious ring. It was comprised of sort of what you would think of as a crust. And it appeared to have some sort of water repellent qualities. Due to the fact that there had been a rain shower that morning, and according to the family who witnessed it, the entire area where the ring was was completely dry. The rest of the ground was completely wet, but it was as if whatever this material was, it was repelling water. And then about a month later, after there had been snowfall, they once again found that the ice had melted both inside and outside of the ring, but the ring itself was left untouched. The Johnsons told their story to a local newspaper, which then of course caused more outside investigators to come in who even months later commented on the fact that the ring was still very distinct and plain to see. They also found under further experimentation that the ground soil underneath the ring was dry up to a depth of about one foot. So this material, whatever it was, it actually sank down underneath about a foot and crystallized everything that it touched. And you've been seeing different pictures here of the ring. You saw the very first Polaroid taken, and then this image here was actually taken 42 months after the landing, and it's still there. 
So that brings us back up to speed with where we are now with this new breaking story. And according to reports, a man by the name of Dr. Errol Farouk has published findings of his investigation and he was actually able to obtain some of the stored solid after requesting it while based in Nottingham University. He wrote, quote, Placing water onto the affected soil was very like placing it onto a glass surface, with the water spontaneously forming into droplets sitting on the surface. Although he wasn't able to fully identify the compound, he claimed to detect a, quote, highly water-soluble organic compound which is potentially chemiluminescent, which would have been responsible for the strange glow at the time. Dr. Farouk also concluded that there were three possible explanations, one being obviously a hoax, another, the ring was in fact a fairy ring or a naturally occurring ring of toadstools, or a genuine alien spaceship had been seen. But he found that a hoax was highly unlikely due to the unusual characteristics of the compound and its elongation towards the wind direction on the night not to mention the four people who witnessed the UFO landing. He also ruled out a fungal ring, saying that the water-soluble alkali metal salt of an organic acid found in the compound could not be produced by fungi. This, he said, meant the conclusion of a genuine UFO sighting as the most favorable. He further said, quote, A picture begins to emerge as to what possibly happened that evening. The hovering object of presently unknown origin appears to have contained within its periphery an aqueous solution of an unstable compound whose likely sole function would be light emission. Some of the solution was deposited into the ground while the object positioned itself under a tree, possibly to avoid observation from the air. Once enough of this solution was deposited, the object departed after which the Johnson family approached the ringed area. Now, it's also said that a lot of what is in Dr. Farouk's book is based largely on a scientific research paper that he wrote for a publication in a number of scientific journals, but apparently this publication was rejected. Dr. Farouk stated that although his report deals with the physical and chemical evidence as required, he was told that he was investigating a quote, inappropriate subject matter. And you know, this goes back to a common denominator in many of these physical trace evidence UFO sightings where you will have this scorched earth. A lot of the times you will have these strange rings that emit radiation. And in some cases like this, leave a very strange chemical residue that further crystallizes the soil and is made up of an unknown material. All of this detailed analysis can be found in the book put out by Dr. Farouk. It's called The Compelling Scientific Evidence for UFOs. And you can actually find it on Amazon. There's a Kindle version you can download as well as a paperback copy, which is about 12 bucks. So, of course, if you have the means, I would definitely read it. I'm actually in the middle of reading it myself. So, this is a very interesting case. And as I said at the beginning, it's never been debunked. And the government, along with its army of trolls, do not want you guys to know that. And if you're still on the fence and maybe you're a little bit skeptical about the existence of aliens, well, I urge you to read up on this specific case and other cases like it, and I guarantee you will have your eyes open. So thank you guys for stopping by today and check back soon because I've got a lot more coming. So we'll see you back here in a bit and stay safe. Bye.